agents that control your browser that actually work. Hello friends, today I want to share with you a new repository that I've stumbled upon which is gaining a lot of traction. They already have more than 6,000 stars on GitHub and in opposing to many different projects that um, claim to be able to control your browser and do actions uh, autonomously as agents most of them don't work, but this uh, project actually seems very promising. I will demonstrate at the end of the video a few use cases, but before we dive in, let me share with you a, a few in, some information about this project. So as you can see, it's gaining traction. Uh, the the uh, 600, 6,300 stars already. In terms of installations it's pretty easy to install you can either install it using docker or just follow the steps the steps that you can see here which are also mentioned in the repository so you git clone the repository cd, CD into the directory then you create a virtual environment activate the virtual environment pip install all the requirements and then you install playwright playwright is a a browser automation library and then you create an env file in the env file you can add any api that you would like you can add openai anthropic uh, or llama deep seek whatever in this specific video we are going to use uh, google um, the google lm which is also free you can get it over here you go to ai studio.google.com hit this button get the api key create api key and then you can just update your env file let me show you exactly where the env file located so you have the env file example you just need to copy it remove the dot example and then you have this file and over here you can add any api keys that you would like mistral deepseek or whatever i've added the A api key for google now um let me show you an, a few examples of how this is working. Before I show you the examples, I want to mention something important that basically you have two options to run this uh, in your browser. One alternative is using Chromium, which is um, without complicating things too much, it's like Chrome but mostly for debugging or you can use um, Chrome, your own Chrome, and then you're going to be already logged in. And if you want to use your own Chrome and you want to be uh, already logged in, you need to add over here the path to your Chrome and the path to your user in Chrome. And you need to make sure that you're opening this um, tool via um, a browser that isn't Chrome because you're, let's say you're going to open the tool in Firefox and then the automation is going to operate in Chrome. Make sure not to open this uh, uh, tool in your Chrome because then you will, encounter, you will encounter issues and it basically won't work. I figured this out after going back and forth uh, trying to sort this out and then I just came here to the issues section in the GitHub repository and I saw that someone else already had the same issue use on browser error as you can see here i got the same error, uh, error and someone just answered you have to open the ui in a non-chrome browser such as firefox or edge by the way guys whenever you encounter any issues i highly recommend that you go to the specific github repository of the project and come to the issue section and look for any issues related because very more often than not you're not the first person who is encountering the issue so very often you can find the solutions over here or alternatively you can find the solutions in the discord now uh, we made the installation all we have to do is open this in firefox so i opened this already in firefox and this is how the ui looks like it's pretty straightforward you can adjust if you would like to use a vision model and um, how many steps you would like how many actions per step then you can choose which LLM you would like to use and which model. As you can see here, many alternatives. I'm using Google and let's say, let's use this Gemini 2.0 Flash. 
then in the browser settings you can define if you would like to use chromium or your own browser i'm going to select this over here you have the path to the recording of the automation and agent history etc over here you have the results and recordings and more configuration but basically if you want to operate this you have two alternatives one is run the agent and the other one is the deep research now let me show you an example by the way before i move forward if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and are interested in ai agents and workflow automation related content please make sure to subscribe and i'm also going to share a, an example now that is related to a newsletter that i have it's called no fluff you can find it in nofluff.online it's basically a weekly newsletter in which i update about interesting projects that i stumble upon and automations and marketing related stuff now let's create an automation that goes to my website and automatically fills out an, the email and submits the form. Go to nofluff.online, find the input field for, let me use voice typing, joining the newsletter, and then make sure to add this email after adding the email please hit the subscribe or call to action button let me close this let me add here to add this email yb plus i whenever i'm testing something i always add the plus and then the time of the test so 10 of february 8:32 p.m. dot gmail. For those of you who don't know, basically, let's say this is your email where uh, yb1987 at gmail dot com. This is one of my emails. Whenever you add a plus, basically, um, you will get all the emails over here to this inbox. But this way, you can uh, kind of debug and also differentiate where you're getting the emails from. So let me let me perhaps ask ChatGPT to provide a better explanation why this is helpful. I wanna make sure that I'm explaining correctly. Can you explain what is the purpose of adding a plus in the email before adding the domain? As an example, Let's see what it says. Adding a plus sign in an email address before the domain is a feature supported by many email providers such as Gmail. This is called email aliasing, yes. Plus addressing and it serves the several purposes. Tracking email sources. You can use the part after the plus to identify where the email was shared. Example, newsletter at Gmail to track signups for a newsletter. You can set up filters in your email provider to automatically sort incoming messages based on aliases. Examples, email sent to YB plus work would go into the work folder. Avoiding spam. If you receive spam to a specific alias, you can identify which website or service leaked your email addresses. For example, if you sign up uh, with YB 1987 plus, let's say, uh, no fluff at gmail.com and then you start getting spam, and you see that all the spam messages were sent to the YB 1987 plus no fluff. You know that the no fluff site leaked your uh, email. It's also an alternative for temporary or unique identifiers. Use it for one time interactions without creating new accounts or by passing duplicate account restrictions, which is also very valuable. Anyway, going back to the automations. Uh, after adding the email, please hit the subscribe or call to action button. Now I need to close Chrome because we want to use the automation in my Chrome. And let's hit the run agent button. And in a moment, hopefully, it will open this website, find the input field using Playwright. You will see it also takes screenshots and also maps out all the elements in the website. And afterwards, it is supposed to add this email address and eventually hit the subscribe button.
let's see what happens it is supposed to work but you know how it works whenever you record uh, things might not work by the way i'm recording this video for the second time because i uploaded it before and had audio issues hopefully um i've been able to sort this out i guess i did okay so it opened correctly now you can see it is mapping all the elements you see the fourth element tagged with the number four is the input box it is supposed to add the email let's see if it does so and afterwards i will show you the log file which is also interesting which basically it shows you exactly the the chain of thought this specific agent has so it analyzes what it sees then it thinks what it should do then it sends an action then it plans the next steps so by the way this takes uh, a few seconds the automation so which is actually actually good because whenever you're doing browser automation especially when you're doing in social networks and you want to avoid detection by the platform sometimes going slower and not seeming as if your robot is actually beneficial you saw now it added the it typed in my email correctly now hopefully it will hit the subscribe button and it will be redirected yes hit the subscribe button which i invite you guys to do as well and it is being subscribed uh, i mean redirected to the subscription box of the newsletter over here you can see my uh, like a, a vsl welcome you welcome you welcome you welcoming you guys to the newsletter okay now let's check out the logs so over here you can see the logs there is also an ability to see the logs via the ui but let's keep it simple okay so as you can see just as an example starting task go to nofluff.online find the input field for joining the newsletter and then make sure to add this email after adding the email please hit the subscribe or call to action button now as you can see it is thinking i need to start by navigating to the website after that i need to find newsletter sign up input field and corresponding submit button then i will input the email address and click the button here's the summary here's the action go to the url as you can see here we have the controller which navigated to the website then it took a, a screenshot it initially it failed but it moved forward then it, it said i made a mistake in the previous step i need to switch to the correct tab first before proceeding the available tabs show that the no fluff data driven automation is on tab number one so i need to switch to the tab this is amazing that it was able to understand that it needs to switch to a different tab then it said i am now on the correct page etc etc as you can see it is worked nicely task completed successfully and then it also you can also see very often it i think it saves the screenshots i don't remember if it's this automation or different tools that i've tested that sa save the screenshots anyway long story short as you saw it worked perfectly i'm going to add more complex use cases in the, in the future test it like i mean stress test the agent to see if it uh, works also in more complex stuff um i'm hopeful it will but obviously it also really depends on the lm that you're using i'm using google at the moment which is i wouldn't say it's the greatest now another alternative that this browser use web ui has is to conduct re deep research which basically um it just conducts deep research basically but in opposing to other deep research mechanisms it doesn't use a uh, api very often you use a serp api or um the really search stuff like this but in this instance in this uh, project they are using browser automation and they're actually going to google and they are conducting the research via the the browser which has pros and cons now over here you can define how many iterations you would like and how many queries per iteration you would like let's do an example compose a report on the use of agentic frameworks in small medium businesses 
Okay. So this is enough just for the sake of example. Then I run the deep research. It's going to open Google. You will see um, Google search. You will see the first search query that it is adding. Then it will take a screenshot and it will analyze the search engine results page. And then it will start diving into different pages. And eventually it will analyze all the content that it was that it scraped and put everything into um, the LLM and the LLM will summarize it. As you can see here, a genetic frameworks application in small and medium businesses, SMBs. And you can see here a case study of small medium enterprises, boost your small business with crew with AI driven agentic, top agentic AI use cases, etc. So now it is taking screenshots of all the elements that and it's also analyzing all the elements on the screen and it will start entering different um, articles and research papers and eventually it is going to spit out a summary um, over here i'm not i don't want to make this too long and this isn't the purpose of the video but uh, i mean showing you the research but i guess you guys get, got the gist i think that's it for today guys i highly recommend checking out browser use web ui it's free and if you use um, Google for API calls, it's also obviously free. Um, it seems very powerful. Seems like the agent is able to pull off browser automations that I haven't seen other agentic uh, workflows that were able to solve this, which is very exciting. Yes, I guess that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, obviously like and subscribe and um, leave a comment below. For those of you who have been following me for a while, uh, I apologize that I didn't upload a video for almost two weeks now because uh, our whole family had some sort of a flu. Now we're all better and um, it was a great reminder of the importance of health and also how valuable agents that can actually operate um, instead of us can be. Anyway, I'm going to go back to recording videos more often if you have specific um, topics that you would like me to cover leave them in the comment section below and until next time let's check this out never mind until next time keep on automating